How are we? We good? Good, good, good. You may be a little surprised. We're, we're changing up the service a little bit today, intentionally on purpose, because we want to demonstrate what we've been talking about over the last few weeks, which is artist development here in our church. We've talked about how it's one of our objectives as a part of the Multiply Initiative, and today we're gonna demonstrate all the different ways that our artists in our church bless us every week. And we've been looking at the story of David in 1 Samuel chapter 16. So if you've got a Bible, you can go ahead and turn there. We're actually gonna be in chapter 17 this week. And we've talked about so far how God discovered him and then developed him. And today we're gonna see how now David is demonstrating his faith with the skills and abilities that God has given him. Now in chapter 17 is the story, famous story of David fighting Goliath, and, and I don't have time to get into all of it, but I'm just gonna hit the highlights of it to show us how we can demonstrate the gifts and abilities God has given us to literally push back darkness in the world, all right? So First Samuel chapter 17, we're gonna start in verse 23. It says this, as he, this David, talked with them, that's his brothers, behold, the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, came out of the ranks of the Philistines and spoke the same words as before. He had been defying the God of Israel, defying all the people. And then I love this line, and it says, and David heard him. Oh, no. David heard Goliath talking smack about his God. I love that line because Goliath had been talking for 40 days. He'd been coming out, defying God, talking against the nation of Israel, saying, bring out your best warrior and we'll fight. And David is just a shepherd boy, right? He's been anointed king, being developed in the service of the king, and he shows up to feed his brothers. His dad had sent him to send some food to his brothers, and so he's just there talking to his brothers, and then he hears Goliath talking. Now, you'll see in just a second how David responds if you don't already know the story, but here's just what I want to point out. David has the heart of an artist. David has the heart of a worshiper. And, and here's what I think is so interesting. The heart of a worshiper, the heart of an artist whose heart is full of faith is to be feared. No one feared David at this point, but they're going to fear him afterwards because he has a heart full of faith. Now the story continues, David is sent to Saul because he said he wants to fight this Philistine, and listen to what he says to Saul, verse 32, and David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Verse 33, and Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth. See, David's heart is full of faith, and he is saying to the king, he's saying to everybody else, you don't have to worry, because my heart, full of faith, your heart may be full of fear, but I'm going to go fight this Philistine. And Saul says back to him, the natural thing that most of us think, and the natural thing that the world says back to most of us, when we stand up with a heart full of faith, Saul says back to him, you're not able to do this. You are but a youth. The reason why I want to point that out is because when you have a heart full of faith and you know that God has given you the assignment and the skills to do something, naturally the world around you is going to say, you're not able to do that. In fact, I think the devil uses those around us sometimes and he may speak directly to us to say to us, you're, you're not able to do that. You are but a, and you fill in the blank. You're, you're but a woman. How, how, how can you do that? You're but a man. How can you do that? You're, you're but you know, a, a kid. You're but a child. You're just a servant. You're, you're just a low level. Who in the world are you to do that? And so often in those moments, right before the crucial victories that we're going to experience in our lives, we give in to the lies that we're not able to do it. And I love how David doesn't even respond to that. David doesn't even deal with the fact that he's a youth or he's not able. Look at how David responds, verse 37. And David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go, and the Lord will be with you. I love David's response. He doesn't even get into it. Yeah, I'm not able. Yeah, I'm just a kid. No, he says, it ain't about me. 
It's about the Lord who's with me because the Lord has already delivered me. He's delivered me from tigers and bears, oh my, right? He's, he's delivered me from all these other things in the past. And guess what, Saul? He's the same God. And so if he can deliver me from a bear, if he can deliver me from a lion, what makes you think he can't deliver me from this joker? Well, what makes you think he can't? It's the same God. And here's what I want to say to you. When God has given us an assignment, right, to go out with the skills and abilities that he has given us to advance the mission of God in the, in the earth today, so often we get hit with, well, you're not able to do that. Who are you? And our response is, listen, it's the same God. I want you to read the stories of the Bible and realize we worship the same God that David worshiped. And so David was convinced. Again, I told you, an, art, an artist whose heart is full of faith is to be feared. Why? Because of who his God is. Now look at this, verse 38. It says, Then Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a helmet of bronze on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. And David strapped his sword over his armor. And he tried in vain to go, for he had not tested them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot go with these for I have not tested them. So David put them off. Now listen to this, verse 40. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the brook and put them in his shepherd's pouch. His sling was in his hand and he approached the Philistine. Here's another principle I think is so important when it comes to those that God wants to discover and develop. You have to take what God has put in your hands and use those with faith. David couldn't use an armor that wasn't fitted for him. It was fitted for Saul. It wasn't fitted for David. It was fitted for Saul. Now, when Saul thinks, this is how you go into battle, you go in with armor, you go in with the sword, David says, no, 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 I haven't tested that. I don't know if I'm any good with that. I do know what I am good with. I'm good with a sling and I'm good with some stones. And, and this is so important, especially when it comes to creativity, especially when it comes to expressing worship. And we talked about this even at the beginning of the series, that each generation has to fit on the armor, has to fit into their hands the things that God has equipped them with, not what he's equipped other people with. And so, so often you and I focus on the armor or the, the sword or the weapons that other people have, and we miss what God has put in our hands. And here's the point. God has put things in your hands. He has given you skills. He has given you abilities. He has given you gifts by his spirit, and he wants you to use those. And so it's not so much about what's in your hand. It's about the God who gave you that gift, and he'll be with you when you use those hands. But I love that David understood a principle. Listen, I can't fight with things that God didn't fit for me. And so as we think about artist development, we think about all the different ways that we can express worship, express our creativity back to God. There are all different kinds of ways that people use the gifts that God has put in their hands here in our church. It may not be a sword, but maybe it's a guitar. God has gifted some within our church to use what he has put in their hands, and their weapon of choice is a weapon of worship. Maybe it's a keyboard. Maybe it's a camera. Maybe it's turning a knob on a soundboard or a fader on a light board. I mean, I'm talking like I know what all these things are. But the point is this. God has put different gifts in your hands, and the goal is not for you to have the gifts of somebody else, but to take the gifts he has given you and use them as warfare in this mission that God has given you. Now, the story goes on. Look quickly at verse 45. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the Lord or the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you down and cut off your head and I will give the dead bodies of the host of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And that all this assembly may know that the Lord saves. Now listen to this. Not with the sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. See, I told you an artist whose heart is full of faith is to be feared. Why? Because they don't fight with traditional weapons. They fight with worship. They fight with faith. 
And that's how the people of God fight. We don't fight with swords. We don't fight with spears. Why? Because the battle's not ours. The battle's the Lord's. We don't fight with traditional weapons. We fight with artistic weapons. We fight with weapons of worship. We fight with faith. And I love that David understood that because here's the thing. David went out there just as a shepherd boy who loved his God, full of faith, using the things that God had put in his hands so that God could get the ultimate credit. He went out there with a heart full of faith, with the things that God had put in his hands, and now you read the story, and God gets all the glory. And that's the way he wants it, because the battle is the Lord's. It's not mine, it's not yours to fight. It's just our job to be faithful. And the Bible says without faith, we cannot please God. And so as we think about artist development, as we think about discovering and developing and deploying artists and leaders within our church, I just want us to see something. The point is not so much about what is in your hand. The point is more about what is in your heart. Do you have the faith to believe that your God is able to do immeasurably more than you would ever ask or think or imagine? I love that God anointed an artist whose heart was just full of faith and he went out in worship saying, you're defying my God and I'm not gonna let that stand. Last verse, verse 50. It says, so David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with the stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. Now this last point, there was no sword in the hand of David. The Bible goes outside or out of its way again to highlight the fact of what was in his hands. What was in his hands is what God had gifted him with. And so let me ask you a question. What's in your hands? What has God gifted you with to use in service of the mission of what he's doing? Because here's the point. If you don't use what's in your hands and use them as warfare, use them as worship, then all the world won't know. See, it was so crucial. David said, listen, I'm doing this because you're defying the armies of God, uh, you're defying God, and I want the whole world to know. The whole world will know that there's a God in Israel. See, when you and I take the things that God has given us, the skills and abilities and, and gifts that he's given us, mine are different than yours, yours are different than the person next to you, but God has given them to you, and he wants you to use them to push back darkness, literally, so that all the world will know that there's a God there's a God. And so you and I have the unique opportunity to use the things that God has given us in our hands. And today, we wanna highlight some of the different ways that the artists in our church are using what God has put in their hands so that all the world will know. You guys check this out. Go to work. It is six o'clock in the morning, and we are on our way to Pickens County High School. So here we are, 6.15 in the morning. You can see this auditorium behind me. We've got to convert this, this school building into a, a multi-site church campus. This is the uh, this is the glorious part about being in the band. Everybody always sees the uh, lights, camera, action part of being in band. No one really gets to see uh, 6.30 in the morning on your hands and knees putting this thing together, but it's worth it. So there's about seven or eight people in the band uh, on a given Sunday, as low as six, as most is about 10. Um, we're always looking for new people. Uh, love to serve love technology, are interested in the ins and outs of a, of a musical band. Uh, we're always looking for more people um, like you. This is Eric, he showed up about uh, two hours ago. He plays electric guitar. He shows up, sets his gear up, he brings his own guitar. And uh, we appreciate it. Brian McGill, stage manager. He gets here about 6.45, 7 o'clock in the morning to make sure we can convert this thing from a school to a portable church. So 
all good, all good team members and players in this whole game. <laughs> So what's happening now, because we're a, a multi-site church, multi-campus church, this is live from the 945 service in Canton. So we're able to do the 945 service, we're able to stream, and then also the 1115. So it's unique to both services here in Jasper as well, which is really neat. Um, in case Jason uh, says something different or does something that uh, people can reference back to which service, uh, it's the same thing that happens in Jasper. Hey church, my name's Zach, I'm the creative director here at Rev. And as we're going through our Works of Art series, we just wanted to show you uh, kind of all that happens on a Sunday from an artist standpoint. So I'm gonna show you uh, kind of behind the scenes of how we do it, Jason's preaching right now. And so as we're going, just follow me. So here's our video room, uh, production team's back here. Uh, there at the console is uh, Keon. He's in charge of our videos, all the cameras on Sundays, what you see on the screens, he coordinates all of that. It all happens right here. So uh, it's a lot of TVs in there, for sure. So here's our lighting booth. This is where all the lights happen. All right, so this is Kiki. Uh, she's part of our production team, uh, doing lighting today. Tell me a little bit about what lights mean for Revolution. <laughs> um, well, lights have actually been a really um, big part of my worship experience for a long time. But um, man, controlling this rig and, and getting the feel for the room right, it really helps with creating that environment that Pastor Jason has talked about that worship creates. Really on Sunday mornings, I just press one button. But man, that one button is so powerful. Uh, and it's really cool to watch the entire room and the entire feel of that worship just change and grow and build with these lights. And um, it's one of my favorite things to do, to be here and to worship Jesus by, by pressing the button. It's really cool. Okay, we're here in the sound booth in between a service. It's called Front of House Road. This is Brian, he's doing sound today. Tell me a little bit about what you do. Um, on Sundays, I get the privilege to just kind of step back and get out of the way, and hopefully we're doing a good enough job that we're helping lead people. So everything from the band to speaking mics and everything, going to the live stream and other campuses, is funneling through here. So big responsibility, but a, a fun one. So this is the band hanging out, hanging out awesome. area. About to start service, and everybody right, just kind of so goes up. Until then. And then we'll pray, and then we'll go on stage and leave worship. Thank you so much for this opportunity. We love you so much. In your name, amen. Amen. All right, let's do it. 30 seconds. <laughs>